People are trying to say like, oh, that's how you disprove God, is that little riddle. And so everybody tries to do all these wise different things saying how that could happen. I just think that's wrapped up in the Trinity. That it's simple. God is spirit. God the Father makes the rock that then Jesus, the physical Jesus, can't lift. So then it works out perfectly. So yeah, God can make a rock that he can't lift. Does that make sense what I'm saying? God the Father could still lift it, but Jesus can't. And so it's like a like just a very easy, simple way to kind of thwart that kind of philosophy that all these atheists try to throw. Does that make sense what I'm saying? And it's amazing how the wise things of God are the simple things and are the things that people throw out, like what it says in 1 Corinthians. Sorry, that was just a little rabbit trail, but I thought it was kind of cool. So I just thought about how then can we be holy we're basically living in a now but not yet phase. The kingdom of God is now, but it hasn't yet fully come. He's not on the earth yet. So our bodies, our lives are in a now but not yet. Does this make sense what I'm saying? So we're saved now. We're holy and dedicated unto the Lord now in relationship. But the fullness of that, the sin nature being gone, no more death, no more tears, all those things are not yet. And so what God says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, he says, this is God's will for you, your sanctification, that you would abstain from the lust that the pagans walk in. That word for sanctification, I can't exactly remember. Uh, hagiasmos is the Greek word. And basically what it means is just to keep on growing in holiness. So simply, when it comes to simple desires, how then can we be holy when we still have simple desires? I put it as seek, save, sanctify. Just a, kind of like a three-step process that's been from the beginning. You'll see early on in my walk with the Lord, or before my walk with the Lord, I started seeking Him out. I wanted to know God. That Jeremiah 29, 13 that I mentioned earlier. You'll seek me and you'll find me when you seek me with all your heart. From there, James 4, 8 says, Draw near unto God, and He will draw near unto you. And I'm declaring that to you all as a promise right now. That as you seek Him, you will experience Him. And then God will come in and He will save you. That He will bring salvation. For those that don't know the Lord, it's first and foremost spiritual salvation. It's them giving their lives to Him. It's them finally going to heaven. Having eternal life now. From there, sanctification. Philippians 1, 6, God says, or not God, but Paul says that I am confident that he who began a good work will complete it unto perfection until the day of Christ Jesus. And so the sanctification process that James 4, 8, that I just talked about, draw near unto God and he will draw near unto you. The rest of that verse says, cleanse your hearts and purify your minds, O sinners. So it's a both and when it comes to sanctification. It's you walking in that holy, that holy relationship, that holy communion, that holy separatedness, that intimacy is the buzzword nowadays, that closeness with God. And as you walk with Him, He changes you completely. I've seen myself go from just a cuss-wording guy that was just in a lot of debauchery, as Brad likes to call it, uh, just a lot of sinful desires, just a lot of impurity. I've seen myself go from this impure man that was weak and that all sorts of different things, weak in a bad sort of way, like weak against my temptations and everything else, to just growing in godliness and maturing as a man and maturing even in consideration for others just because I've walked hand in hand with Jesus. Does that make sense? I've walked hand in hand. That holy relationship that separated, dedicated, committed relationship. And I wanted to bring it all back in to what the end goal of that holy relationship is. The Ezekiel 11, uh, chapter 11, verses 19 through 20. God spoke about this in the Old Testament times. He said, I will give them one heart and put a new spirit, the Holy Spirit, within them. And I will take the heart of stone out of their flesh and give them a heart of flesh that they may walk in my statutes 
and keep my covenants and do them. Then they will be my people, and I shall be their God. Hallelujah. That, there's that Revelation 21 verse again. I've already read it off once. And then I was also thinking of, actually, you know what? No, uh, 1 John 3, 2 through 3. I was talking about how we're in a now but not yet phase and how we're walking with Jesus and he's making us his people. And so John, the closest disciple to Jesus ever, said, Beloved, now we are children of God. And it has not appeared as yet what we will be. But we know that when he appears, we will be like him because we will see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. So I just want to pray to kind of end off just centered around that Hebrews 12. Just that thought process and that truth of fixing our eyes on Jesus and of not on our works, not on our religion. And as I was just in here earlier, I was just thinking about how with all the hugs, with all the love I've seen, a lot of you guys are really starting to experience that truth of being his people, of walking with him and keeping his statutes and covenants and you shall be his people and he will be your God. I'm just encouraged by all the love and all the grace that I've seen from you all today. But I want to also encourage you to two things. One, don't ever get into that, that lifestyle saves me, that religion saves me mentality because it creeps in unaware. I've seen it in my own life, and I know I've seen it in the lives of others. And any time that you're comparing yourself with somebody else and saying, oh, he's not living right, whether that be a brother, whether that be an aunt, whether that be a grandpa or grandma or whatever else, any time you compare yourself to them, that's part of that lifestyle saving you or that religion saving you rather than Christ. And it's not what Christ would have. He invites all to come in. He invites all to that saving relationship, that sanctifying relationship, where your hope grows deeper in Him. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to go ahead and pray. And if anybody else feels like they need to pray, just if there's any sort of confession of sin, so that way you can get right with God or whatever else, I'm going to leave just like 30 seconds before I pray. You can just shout it out. Whatever you feel like. If you feel like you need to do it in a more private setting, come see me or Mark after service. So, yeah. God, I just pray, Lord, that our hope would be firmly fixed on you, Lord. God, I just pray, Lord, that, that our gaze would be firmly fixed on you, Lord. And God, that we wouldn't mix the holy and the common. God, that we wouldn't mix who we are with who we were in our past life, Lord, before being saved. God, that we wouldn't mix who we are with what we thought was righteousness, that we wouldn't mix what you've claimed as righteousness with what we think is righteousness, but instead that we would truly do that Matthew 16 reality of giving up all, of saying that if, that if anyone desires to follow me, he must deny himself, take up his own cross and follow me. God, I pray that we would just give up our lives, that we would just give up our thought patterns and everything else for saving relationship, for life with you even deeper, Lord. God, a lot of people here are already saved, Lord. As far as in the spiritual sense, we're saved going to heaven. But God, we want to be saved from our, our wrong attitudes. We want to be saved from our wrong lusts, Lord. We want to be saved from our wrong thoughts, Lord. From rebellion, Lord. From everything, Lord. We don't want to just be saved ticket to heaven, Lord. 
Because if you don't keep walking with Jesus after that, it's no longer a ticket to heaven. God, we want to be your people instead, Lord. So God, I pray that upon each and every single person here. I pray that their hearts will be wrapped up in being part of your people. And you are our God, Lord. So God, I thank you for this time. I pray anointed times of worship, not only right now, but every day with you until next Sunday and every day from here on out. That would be a daily, moment by moment, precept upon precept, seeking you and knowing you even deeper. I thank you, Lord. I pray blessing over this congregation and anybody else that sees this, Lord. I pray deep, just Holy Spirit conviction and Holy Spirit love upon each and every part, Lord. Bring us closer and closer to you in every way. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.